Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a nice video for you. Uh, I've got a new offering or somewhat new offering from Cold Steel. It is new for this year. Um, this is the Cold Steel Finwolf. Really cool blade and I'll just tell you by way of introduction, the reason I was interested in this is because it's a folding knife with a Scandi grind or a zero grind which is pretty cool. It's also um, a fairly budget friendly offering from Cold Steel. So I was interested just to see, you know, they've upgraded everything and I just wanted to see what their you know $35 offering was going to be like. Um, I don't know, I would be I would I would suspect that we'll see a few more options in this price category because it's always good as a business to keep you know Cold Steel has really built a lot of their business on having some budget friendly blades and I would suspect that they'll still do that kind of thing okay uh, pretty much everything across the board from them has gone up in price and so it makes sense that they introduce something else into the lineup that still hits that that really budget friendly price point. And in fact, overall, I've been quite impressed with this. As a $35 blade, it's really, really good, with the only limitation being that a Scandi ground blade has some limitations. It certainly has some major benefits, and I'll talk about those, but it also has some limitations. All right, let's get into size and weight first of all, so that I can tell you, you know, one of the things that I like about this knife is the size and the, to the blade length to weight ratio is very good. So this knife is eight inches overall. The blade is three and three eighths inches and the handle is four and five eighths inches. So uh, really good EDC size. You know, we've talked about lots and lots of blades that land right around that eight inch mark. And this is sort of yet another one. Now what's kind of impressive about this is the weight on this is only 3.5 ounces, which is excellent. Uh, so 3.5 ounces for an eight inch knife. Hey, that's, you know, that's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, that's pretty well done on Cold Steel's part, okay? Now, since we've got talk about size and weight, let's offer some similar size, similar weight, and somewhat similar use knives, okay? Now, if you're carrying this as, now a Scandi grind is kind of a bushcrafting knife, is a wilderness grind. Uh, and if you're carrying it for that purpose, there are a few knives that compare well. Um, the, the Rap Model 1 is bigger and heavier, but uh, very close in price. Almost, I think you can probably find these literally for the exact same price if you shop around on Amazon and eBay. Um, the overall size on this one is a bit bigger, and the blade is going to be a little more durable because um, it's a full flat grind rather than a Scandi grind. But uh, again, you know, this I think would be a knife you'd want to consider if you were considering a Finwolf. All right, along the same lines, uh, I've often talked about this knife. I really think this is an impressive knife. Um, this is the also from Ontario, the Utilitac 2. This comes in a bunch of different configurations. Uh, this obviously is the one that I'm most, in, most interested in. Again, similar size. The weight is considerably more. This is around five ounces, and the Rat Model 1 was around five ounces. So this is coming in considerably lighter, but there's no stainless steel liners. Um, I don't think that's an issue in terms of, of strength and durability on this because this does have the triad lock. Uh, <clears throat> what else have we got here? Um, okay, now this is going to be similar weight and similar price point, but it's considerably a weaker knife. Okay, this is a really, really strong, durable design. Uh, the Flash 2 is not what I would describe as strong and durable. It's a very nice EDC blade, and if you're buying this primarily as an EDC, then these compare well. But if you're buying this for more of a bushcraft knife, probably not a comparable option. Uh, I just brought this in because of the size and because of the price point. Almost exact size and weight and price point are all pretty much exactly the same as the Finwolf. Um, this is not as durable, and so this is a better EDC option than maybe this would be, but they'd be you know comparable in that role, and especially if you're looking at the Fin Wolf to be your everyday carry knife. Okay, uh, another similar option is the Kershaw Knockout. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal blade. Okay, now it's obviously more expensive than this, but if you're looking for a good everyday carry, uh, the size and weight is very similar. This is under four ounces. This is under four ounces. Um, the blade steel on this is better. The materials overall are a little better. But remember that this is, you know, twice the price, okay? Around $70, while well, this is around $35. So, uh, again, though, this might be a good option. If you're primarily looking for an EDC blade, you may want to take a look at something like the Knockout. Uh, let's do the last, a couple of cold steels last. Here's a knife that is, 
you know, very reminiscent. Here's the uh, Cold Steel American Lawman. This is the Aus 8 version. So these are very, very similar. And this one, if you look for the Aus 8 version, you can still find them around and they're much cheaper now than they were now that there's an upgraded version of this. Um, again, this is a little more versatile or the blade on this is going to be just a little tougher. The materials are a little better. You know, you've got G10 rather than GrivX or which is essentially just a reinforced plastic material. Uh, so this may be an option for you that you'd want to consider. Uh, even possibly the new upgraded version, although the price point is going to be considerably more. Uh, finally, uh, the Cold Steel Code 4. If you're looking for an EDC knife, and if you're looking for a lot of versatility, this is going to be much more versatile than this, okay? It's going to be appropriate for almost any situation where you could need a knife. This one is going to have some limitations, okay? So versatility is really, really high on the Code 4. Again, this is the Aus 8 version. Uh, now they're offered in the CTSX HP, which is going to cost more. All right, now, Let's get back to the Finwolf and talk specifically about what it's good for. Some of those knives I've shown you, they are comparable but not the same, okay? Because the Scandi grind, and I can tell you I tested this out pretty extensively. I used one piece of wood so it was fair, and I took this blade along with about four or five others and just did a straight push cut into the wood. And what I was testing for is how easy this penetrated versus the others. And this thing does, as a Scandi grind, grind is intended to do, it does penetrate material better, okay? It slides right in and you can get a very deep bite into uh, a wood material or any other kind of slicing task. It just slides through material like you wouldn't believe. And that's because there is literally nothing behind the edge. It is just zero ground, right? There's the 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 grind is the edge grind, okay? So uh, really, really interesting and really fun to try a different variation. You know, I've got lots of blades that have that secondary grind uh, that we're used to seeing. I don't have any that have this. So it was really a lot of fun for me to test this out against all kinds of things. And even slicing, you know, phone book paper or cardboard or anything like that, this just slices extremely, extremely well. The other cool thing about this particular style of grind is because of that edge geometry, uh, this continues to slice well even if it gets a little bit dull, okay? So all of that is pretty cool when you start comparing it to other blades and I think a lot of those things that I mentioned are legitimate reasons to pick this over some of those other knives that I've shown you. Now I will say this, if you do any kind of cutting task, now let's, let's talk about the blade, uh, we've been talking about the grind anyway, the weak point on this kind of a grind is that, uh, especially in a stainless steel rather than a high carbon steel, uh, this, this edge could chip or bend or roll uh, more easily than pretty much any of the other knives I've shown you. You know, we'll use the uh, Utilitac 2 for an example. Okay, because there's a lot more material down here than there is down here, all right? And that does create a little bit of weakness. So. You just kind of need to be aware of that. Treat this maybe like you would on some other thin blade steel knife, you know, maybe a, a Spyderco Military. We've got that super fine tip on it, something where you've got to be a little bit careful of the edge uh, and you'll do just fine with this. And it actually will perform a lot of EDC tasks really well, all right? One thing I would warn you is if you are cutting wood, don't do what often many of us do, which is, you know, cut into your piece of wood and then break it to break that, that material out, uh, you could bend your blade doing that. Now, we talk about this blade, it is Aus 8, so Aus 8 is going to be a decent performer, all right? Certainly, I'm not going to complain about Aus 8, uh, it's totally fine. It's obviously not in the same category as the steels that Cold Steel has gone to with its other offerings but it's gonna perform just fine. And in this grind, because, you know, if this was a super hard steel, it would be pretty tough to sharpen because when you're sharpening this, you're not just taking a little bit of material off that secondary bevel. There's no secondary bevel. So you're grinding material off this whole large edge. Okay, so if we imagine, what have I got here that I can use as a demonstration? So here's a Lord of the Rings movie that just happens to be sitting. So if this is a sharpening stone, you're going to put this edge down on that angle and work it slowly along. I'm trying not to cut this, so I'm not. But you see how you literally match 
the grind angle and you just push down onto the stone and that's how you sharpen. Now I will say this thumb stud does get in the way when you're doing that so if you're going to sharpen this knife take the thumb stud out then do your sharpening then put it back in okay. Uh, probably in the field you can get away with kind of angling the knife this way so you see how I can put an angle on the knife and still get all of the blade in contact with my pretend stone here so you can definitely do something like that and not have to take that thumb stud out but if you're you know planning to you know if you're at home you're in a controlled environment you're going to do a good edge on it I would take that uh, thumb stud out all right uh, let's see is there anything else about this blade that I should mention I think that's pretty well it you can see that um, it's a fairly traditional blade design and uh, you can see that skinny grind does look pretty cool as well doesn't it uh, I like really like the look of it. Let's get to lockup and deployment. Not a whole lot to say here, guys. This is a Scandi ground blade. I mean, this is a triad lock. Two major features of this knife that I like. So I just confused them in my head for a second there. Uh, triad lock is a great lock. Very strong. Very durable. Uh, again, I've said this before. I really don't think you're going to find a lock in a folding knife that's stronger than the triad lock. And and cold steel has been testing that theory, right? quite extensively on that series of videos where they've been pounding the snot out of a whole bunch of different knives and the triad lock always does really really well okay it's just inherently you know in terms of the engineering of it it's an extremely strong design and I don't know that anyone will ever be able to come up with something better all right so with that triad lock it's just ridiculously strong and as with other cold steels from this year I feel like there's, you know, as you as you deploy this blade, it just feels smoother and cleaner than the original cold steels that I've had for a few years now. You know, the 2012, 2013 produced cold steels. Um, I feel like this year, uh, when they when they went through the changes that they've made with the upgraded steel and and changed designs and stuff, um, I feel like they have tightened up tolerances and quality control. And they were doing a fairly good job before, but now they're doing an exceptionally good job, okay? So even at the $35 price point, I find this to be quite smooth. I can flick it open. And you guys, I think I've mentioned before that a lot of my other cold steels, I couldn't flick open. They just weren't smooth enough. And so, uh, again, real achievement here for $35 to be as smooth and solid feeling as this is, is pretty good. Now, one little fit and finish, fit and finish issue. If you look through the handle this way, the way I'm looking toward the camera, you can see a little bit of light coming through. So that's just an issue of how tightly this handle was put together. Uh, not the end of the world, but it is worth mentioning that, yeah, it's, it's not maybe perfect. Um, the handle, which is kind of the next thing we want to talk about, is a Grivex handle. That's what Cold Steel calls it. Essentially, it's just a fiber reinforced plastic. Okay, so it's it's just upgraded plastic to be stronger and usually it's glass reinforced. Okay, so there's tons of these out there. You know, Spyderco has FRN and this is Grivex and there's a few others that are name brands. They all essentially do the same thing. They're just strong plastic and they are very strong and, and you know, I have no complaints about it. The texturing on this is okay. You know, it's it's not super amazing, but it's it's not an issue at all. The handle shape, though, does do a really good job of locking your hand in there, especially with that sort of hook on the, the back of the handle there. Really, really secure hold that you can get on this knife. So if you're doing a lot of hard work with it, if you're, you know, working on a shelter out in the woods or something, I think this is going to serve you pretty well. Uh, and, you know, it's I'm really hesitant to recommend a lot of blades for bushcrafting type stuff but with a cold steel and that triad lock I, I'm really not that hesitant is it true that this could break on you could fail at the pivot absolutely uh, any folding knife that's a weak point okay and so would I prefer a fixed blade almost all of the time absolutely you know but if if you know maybe you're going for a day hike or you know this is the knife you're going to carry in your pocket just in case I, I think you'll be served well okay uh, let's see anything I forgot to mention oh the pocket clip is only tip up carry left or right hand side so that's about it overall oh yeah and a lanyard hole it's a nice big lanyard hole 550 cord would go through there very very easily uh, if you're going to use this for woods type of stuff maybe put some bright orange or bright green paracord on there so that if you drop it it's easy to find afterward now uh, do I recommend this knife absolutely 
with that one qualification that this grind is very thin and may not be for everybody or for every purpose. Hey buddy, there's my son Joel just kind of walking through. Um, I, I don't have any major complaints. No, you gotta stop. I'm almost done. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, almost, so yeah, overall, good knife. I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't hesitate to buy this if you're interested in it. Now if you think that Scandi grind is gonna be an issue for you, Maybe not, maybe buy a Mora Companion and try that first for like $12 and if you like it, then go to this. Um, but even at, at 35 bucks, you know, it's a pretty good option to try a Scandi Grind and, and see what you think of it. All right, there you go guys. Great blade, I, I've been really impressed with it uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you soon.